Welcome back. Now, in response to the maltreatment of citizens of Nigeria and Africa and China, the House of Representatives has moved a motion seeking relevant government agencies to check the validity of immigration documents of Chinese nationals in Nigeria. This would be a means to discovering illegal and undocumented immigrants and repatriate them back to China. However, this is the answer to putting a stop to the racist acts being experienced by Nigerians in China. Still with us to have a conversation on this is Dio Kayode, a political technocrat, live in the studio. And via Skype, we have the president of African Development Goals Initiative, Mr. Williams Wallace. Thank you, Mr. Williams, for joining us. Thank you. What is your reaction to the move by the House of Reps to investigate the legality of Chinese nationals living in Nigeria for possible repatriation back to their country? And why is this expedient now? Well, let us, uh, um, uh, for the sake of uh, memory, go back to the great Chinese strongman Mao Tse-Tung. He said, uh, uh, you know, a journey of a thousand miles starts with the first steps and you keep going. So Nigeria has done the right thing, the House of Reps, has taken those first steps. And it has become expedient because the racism and the uh, fact that our Nigerians and Africans are now starving, you know, and God forbid we don't want anybody to die uh, because of this, it has to be brought back home. And it has to be expedient now that we now start to take the first steps to uh, get retribution. And retribution has to mean, you do this to us, we have to now exact from you. And if it means getting rid of some of you, if not all of you, uh, for uh, immigration uh, discretions and illegal minings and false IDs, which they are wont to do all the time, I think this is the right time. It's a, a great step in the right direction. Uh, Mr. Dyer, would you say, why is this expedient right now for us to do this? for the Nigerian government to do this? Yes, it is uh, quite expected that uh, they should do this. Even before now, they're supposed to have done it. But, but, I have my reservations as regards what they are doing. Where is it going to lead them? Because either you like it or not, our government's dependence on Chinese government is just too much. Look at how much money we have been taking from the Chinese. And of which somebody like me have been saying, look, these guys are not the best set of people to deal with. Bearing in mind what they have done in, in Zimbabwe, what they have done in Angola, what they have done in so many other African countries, all right? We have been saying, no, look, it's, it's, it's inappropriate to put all our economy in the hands of the Chinese. Look at what happened. Look at what happened when, when uh, about sixteen or yeah, sixteen or fifteen of them of doctors came in. Yeah. How, how who authorized their coming in? Till today, nobody can tell because the health minister said he was not aware. Who authorized uh, PC airline to go and bring them? So what I'm saying is yes, what they are doing is right. They're supposed to have done it, but I can bet you what they are doing is highly insignificant as the P in psychology. Dr. Wallace, do, do you want to agree with um, Mr. Kyle and what he just said? And again, yeah, yeah, us well, doing uh, this now. Kyle is making some very valid points. However, but, but are we, we have are to we doing this, Mr. Wallace, are we doing we this from a, from, a, from a vantage point? Given the fact that we have so much of economic dependence on China, is this, if we have to do this now, is this from a very vantage point in, in the life of our yeah. economy? Yes, listen. Um, is, is China the only uh, the only lender? Is China the only way we can raise funds? We can raise funds internally. We can raise funds. African Development Bank. We can go to others. We can bring back from the diaspora. There are different ways to raise funds for what we need. It is just too easy to say uh, here the Chinese are giving us easy money and take it. No. I think the populace have to get up and say, we're not seeing some of these deals. It's not transparent. People have got to question what kind of deals these are. Look at them legally, transparently. What are we entering into? Most of it is just money for major, major, what I call white elephants. Why is it not going into health? Why is it not going into education? 
Why is it not going into the things that we need, right? We don't need to have uh, dependence on Chinese money and uh, economies for us to succeed. I think it's wrong. Uh, the African free trade area that's about to take off in July, which has been postponed, is going to answer one of those questions. We start intra-trading with our African uh, brothers and sisters and keep the money going around in Africa. That way we start to raise funds for ourselves and we be dependent on each other and not on Chinese toxic loans. That's what it is. If you're a banker, you know that that's a toxic loan. It will never be repaid and you are going to be hamstrung to them forever. And we can't do that. Now, Nigeria is yeah. too way advanced in terms of knowledge and power. And I'm talking about the knowledge that Nigerians have all over the world, not only in Nigeria and the diaspora, to, uh, to become so weakened by, you know, what I call a Trojan gift. You know, it's a Greek, uh, Greek gift. Now, there, there's yeah. nothing more to it. Doctor, let, let's consider the, the series of reports of racial discrimination and the poor treatment of Nigerians we've heard in, in China. Now, there have been several interventions and also there have been several denials from the Chinese authority. But this okay. ill treatment still continues. Why, why do you think this is so? Well, the, because the Chinese have a mindset that has been given by their president, and it's a statement of fact. I can send it to you. He said that uh, Africa, you know, um, their administration is corrupt, their health is non-existent, and they are just fanatics of religion. And uh, they have had, you know, museums showing side-by-side uh, -side Africans with animals. So as far as Chinese are concerned, we are not humans. And they don't even consider themselves you know, uh, 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 um, to be anything religious or Christian or Muslim or any. They just see uh, themselves as being superior to blacks and to Africans wherever they are. And so the attitude is, well, you can shout as much as you want and you can say, yes, we are discriminating. We will continue to deny it. You know that China is very deceptive and the Chinese are very deceptive. They continue to lie even to the world about everything else. So who are we as Africans to lie about? They continue to do what they want to do with us. And in spite of all that we see on television, on the Internet, they will deny it. It's part of uh, how communist China behave. Lie, 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 deceive, 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 okay. deny, deny, deny. Right. That's, that's their stance always. Uh, Not just to Africa. Yeah, yeah, they do it to the rest yeah. of the world. Yeah. Why, why you respond? I want to put a question to you so yeah. you can also respond to that. Yeah. Um, okay. Why you say react to what um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Wallace just said? Now, okay. do you think what do you think the, the Nigerian government should be doing to put an end to all of this racial discrimination against the citizens? And do you think they're doing enough as it is? Bring them. Home. There is nothing we can do, in as much as we are still entrenching that master-slave relationship. What is existing between Nigeria and Ghana, I mean, and China is master-slave relationship. We have already enslaved ourselves onto their hands. And not until when we get ourselves emancipated from such that it's not, it will continue. Look at it. They're telling you that, no, it, it, that, that's not what is happening in their country, but we're all seeing it here. I could remember the, the external affairs uh, minister called the ambassador to his office and was showing him the tape. And was, he was still denying it. I said, okay, I'm going to get back to my home country to find out. What else do you want to find out? For, to, to what extent have they been able to arrest those people? Those people that they were seen inside that video, have they been able to arrest them? What have they done to that? You remember that's what happened to us in South Africa? during the xenophobic uh, attacks. Right. Yeah. Do you understand? But the issue is, aside from the master-slave master relationship, we place, our government place no value on our lives. If our government has been placing value on our lives, outside of who wouldn't have been treating us this way. People will call you, I mean, people will call your child the name, you call it, you call it that child. So it is the name that our government is calling us, that they are calling us outside. They dare not do that to a single American. Will they do that to a single American? They dare not do it. They, not, they will know that they are in soup. They dare not do that to a French national, not to a British national. 
They dare not do it. But they know Nigeria, they place no value on lives. So, what do we expect? Dr. Wallace, members of Nigeria's House of Representatives have urged government to urgently begin the evacuation process of all Nigerians who have tested negative to COVID-19 in China and are willing to return home. Let's talk about the facilities firstly to accommodate these people and what you prescribe for the government to start doing immediately. Well, I mean, I think uh, Lagos State has already, the governor has already said that he has spoken to uh, a number of hotels in Lagos who will be willing to accommodate the repatriated Nigerians for a quarantine period. And that's a step, a very positive step in the right direction. I think they should do the same in the, in, in the main cities, and that is Abuja, maybe uh, uh, Lagos, and perhaps Port Harcourt, at least so that it's, you know, it's, it's not dependent on just one particular state. Um, but I think it is imperative that they uh, re return all Nigerians who have tested negative, I think including those who are also positive, and isolate them and look after them. You, you don't expect the Chinese who have said they're not going to do anything with them in terms of uh, keeping them in their homes or in their hotels. <laughs> These people are going to be, you know, starved. They're going to be ill-treated. It is better you are home where at least you have family, you have people who are nearby, and you're in your own environment. It is wrong for uh, the uh, uh, government not to bring them back immediately. It is imperative that they do. We must do that. It sends a signal. It sends a signal of the Chinese. We are taking our citizens, according to Coyote, very seriously. We appreciate our citizens, and uh, we are going to take care of them and send the message. In the meantime, we are also taking steps to send your citizens back as well. I think the Chinese doctors at Coyote talked about that should be sent back immediately. What are they doing here? <laughs> we have our doctors who are doing what they need to do and who are well trained. We have over 6,000 of them. We don't need any Chinese doctors here, unless there is a plan and an agenda. Oh, now, now you, you said by doing that, do you, do you see this sending the required message enough to get the Chinese government to, to up its response to protecting Nigerians there and punishing anyone who mitigates their human rights? You, you, you see, the thing is that until, uh, you know, uh, we take the steps like, like the lawyers are taking and the House of Reps are taking to, to, to bring them to book, China will do nothing, right? I think it is important that um, we, we don't need to be begging China to do uh, the right thing. They don't. The only thing they recognize is when you take action against them. So the action is, and we have started the steps, the lawyers who have uh, said they're going to take them to court, international court, for 200 billion. Yeah, that makes sense. The uh, House of Reps who have set up committees and have tasked the Ministry of Justice, they've tasked uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Immigration, and the security agencies to now check all Chinese in Nigeria to find out that they have uh, got valid paperwork, then they will recognize that we mean business. If we don't do that, if we don't act as though we mean business, they say, hey, huh, you know, <laughs> Nigeria, Africa, they just talk. We have already given them money. They can't say very much. No, not at all. We must act. Uh, Mr. Kyle, do you think this is strong enough a message if we start doing that, repatriating these people back to China, Chinese, um, the illegal immigrants, Chinese in Nigeria it's, back? Is, is it a strong enough message? It is even too late to be doing this. We're supposed to have been doing this ever since. Can you, can you, have you ever been to all these Chinese uh, factories before and look at the way they, they demean our citizen working with them, all right? And this is not what government is not aware of. Government is aware of all this, but they have not been doing anything. So the thing is, let the immigration people stand up to their onions and then go around all these, uh, all, all these uh, Chinese industries. Check their papers. Go to CAC. Unfortunately, CAC got burnt of recent. I don't know. I don't know which section of CAC got burnt. You know, you remember the inferno yes. that happened in CAC. But then they can see go through their system and see which of those companies are not well documented. Right. I like there's a particular bank. I won't mention the, na the name of the bank now. That is also related to, 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 to this Chinese people. 
So they should also they should also look at the books of that bank, that particular bank. They know. Okay. Quickly, um, Dr. Wallace, in, in recommendation, in just 30 seconds, what would you recommend at this point in time to the Nigerian government and to Nigerians in, in China? Right. Well, I would recommend one that yes, we get everybody back home, and in the, and in uh, in Nigeria, we check all their paperwork, and we also now get uh, uh, an indigenization program on. All Chinese who are here, they, 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 they transfer their knowledge to Nigerians. Like in Dubai, we, we, we set up all the nationalization of the companies, 70, 30, Nigerians only. When they've got their profit back, they head back to China, and we take over the companies. We have to act like that. That's the only way that we will uh, uh, get our own citizens back with some sort of moral rights. Right. Dr. Williams Wallace, it's been a pleasure having you join us in Plus Politics and for your insightful contribution. Thank you very much. Thank you. By way of recommendation, in just 30 seconds, Mr. Cowdy. Yeah, he, he, has, he has said it all, but I will also want to include that uh, what as of representatives have started, they should also include the Senate so that it will be more powerful. They shouldn't look back, they shouldn't renege, else. Somebody like me, we go out after them. Political technocrat Dio Cowdy, thank you very much for joining us on Plus Politics My and pleasure. for your great contribution. Thank you for staying with us. We'll take our Plus report now, and when we return, my take. Stay with us. The House of Representatives has approved a 15 billion naira special intervention fund for Kano over the management of the coronavirus pandemic and the mysterious deaths recorded in the state in the last two weeks. The motion was moved by the leader of the House, Honorable Al Hassan Dogua, calling for quick and urgent intervention by the federal government to save the lives of the residents of the state. Honorable Dogua said that if the situation in Kano State is not quickly checked, more residents will lose their lives in the coming days. Convinced of the urgent need to arrest the rising cases of unexplained deaths in Kano State and also scale of national response initiative to the coronavirus pandemic including the establishment of at least one testing center in every state of the Federation to save the nation from the grave scenario being witnessed today in Kano State. Appreciate the actions taken by the Federal Republic of Nigeria as contained in the recent national broadcast by the President and Commander-in-Chief of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Muhammad Buhari. The House resolves that to summon the DG NCDC, Honorable Minister, and Chairman of the Presidential Tax Force to appear before it at plenary on Tuesday, May 5, 2020, to brief it on government response initiative to the COVID-19 pandemic and its template for the intervention in all the states of the Federation. All the 24 House of Reps members, the House of Assembly members, should go to their constituencies and engage with the religious and traditional leaders in their community and explain this thing. Because we have seen so many viral videos where people are chanting they don't believe in coronavirus. And it is very dangerous, Mr. Speaker. So I want to urge all members from all the states, because it is canal today, it can be any state tomorrow. If you play kids gloves with coronavirus, it will deal with you. Look at what had happened in Ghana. They, take, they thought they were succeeding, and they relaxed too early. What happened? There was a spike. So we have to very, very... And here is my take. The cases of COVID-19 in Nigeria has jumped from one case exactly two months ago to 1,500 cases today. And I believe that the numbers are going to increase in the coming weeks, especially if the NCDC hits its desired mark of 2 million tests in three months. The truth is, Nigeria is a nation blessed with over 200 million people in population. We especially need to be careful and exercise great caution. It is my opinion that this is not the time to relax lockdown conditions. This is the time to enforce it even more as countries which have recorded some success in dealing with the pandemic took this route. The House of Representatives must be commended for mandating the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to repatriate all Nigerians, whether on business, trade, studying, and all Nigerians back home. 
That sends a clear message that Nigerians don't need to be in China and we want all of our citizens back as our lawmakers are now taking the next immediate steps. I will also advise the Ministry of Justice to work with and financially and legally support all Nigerians who have been deprived of their fundamental human rights to get redress in international courts. China has been known to be one of the greatest abusers of human rights going by history. Also, the House of Representatives should mandate its own key committees, namely Immigration, Corporate Affairs Commission, the Nigerian Content Development Monitoring Board, and all other relevant ministries, departments, agencies, and security organizations to check the validity of these to ascertain the number of illegal Chinese persons in Nigeria, expatriate quotas, and all their businesses, and to take a decisive action forthwith. It is no longer business as usual for the African continent, Nigeria included. Africa has awoken, and in good time too, before the continent, the continent continues on a destructive path of a civilization by the Chinese. And that's our show for tonight. Thank you for staying with us. Plus Politics returns tomorrow by 7 p.m. And remember, be safe.